Okay, so Rob's in this one. <laughs> I just happened to be driving by. <laughs> okay, so, well, actually, he specifically said, uh, you know, for the last episode of the, uh, of the second season, he really wanted to come in, he really wanted to talk about that episode, and so we have, uh, the crossroads of destiny, and, um, yeah, shit. <laughs> a lot of stuff happens yeah, in this one. Shit, exactly. Shit goes down. <laughs> yeah, no, this was, like, this sort of, like, so I, I think I might have said before it's kind of like Game of Thrones, kind of. Uh, you know, except if it was Game of Thrones, like half the people be dead. You know, like yeah, mostly all of them would probably be dead. Avatar would be no, dead they by just now. get knocked unconscious or imprisoned in this show, <laughs> and then killed, <laughs> and then they chop their head, off. make it look like they're gonna live, and then chop their head off or something. Yeah, uh, I, I think your hopes for a killing spree ending aren't really gonna materialize. But well, <laughs> man, wouldn't that just be a twist? Just like last episode, just suddenly <laughs> like. But, well, end, technically every... they do. I mean, Everybody, he does sort of die. die. <laughs> everybody dies, and Aang is the only one left standing, <laughs> crying over the like world that's been burnt to a crisp. What have I done? Then someone slits his neck. <laughs> Unlike Superman, who's you, where they're just like, you saved us. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, anyway, okay. So we got this episode. Um, well, first of all, I mean, just. You know bad news is coming when it says previously an Avatar. It's like, if you die, all the Avatars will be destroyed and we will not be able to come back. And it's like... No pressure. Oh, oh that's that, that's a great lead-in. Like, I'm sure everything's going to be fine in this episode. Yeah. So, so we pretty much have uh, Azula and her... Um, uh, her gang have pretty much taken over the Earth Kingdom uh, through... Uh, actually... I wonder if they were referencing how when she was saying, you know, destroy it from the inside instead of the outside, referencing how the drill was taken down. Pretty much how Aang took it down. I wonder if that was sort of the idea that she well, was, yeah. well, that's how they I, took I, that down. Maybe we should use sort of the same ideology here. Yeah, I think so. And what a great reveal, too, because when they showed up in the... Um, in Suki's armor. Mm. <laughs> I just, Where is Suki, by the way? <laughs> that's the great that's the great question, which is what makes this whole thing really creepy is she's never acknowledged and you know it's not an uh oh well they forgot about her. This whole time I've been watching the show and this this last episode and this season as I go on into third season, I'm just like where is Suki? What the? Well, I, I, was, I, I was like, this can't be good. I, I didn't vanished. think about it. I didn't think about it because on the cover of the second season, you you see like him holding her when really it should probably be the it's other very, way around. He's yeah. the one having the hard time. Yeah. But regardless, it's like, oh, they're going to the be like, kicker. they're going to be the item. And it's like, she's in what, two episodes? And then she's like out of commission for the second you know, season. It, it was a very Star Wars poster kind of cover to this season. <laughs> I'm like, so, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But. So yeah, I have no idea where the hell she is. Um, I, you can only assume it's bad. Cause <laughs> the last time we saw her was her and Azula. Yeah. And they have her clothes, yeah. obviously. And so I find it, no you know, I, I find it way, way more creepier that we don't know what happened to her. Yeah, and then she's, <laughs> she's just, just dropped off the planet. And it's so, like... <laughs> uh, uh, so pretty much you have the, this big fights going on. You have this wonderful line where she double crosses or triple crosses, whatever the. Uh, the second in command of the Earth Kingdom. Yeah, that and was great. he's like, that was the part where I double cross you, attack her. Nobody even tries. And she's like, they're just waiting to see who will win. Who do you think is going to win? And he just knows he's lost because if they try an actual battle, she will whoop him. And just by looking into her eyes, he has that beat of sweat like, no, she has my moves calculated all out. She's got me. And when he bows down and says, you beat me my own game. God, that fucking awesome liar. She's like, you weren't even a player. <laughs> I, it's just I love it too that the way he line. just like totally surrendered. He's like, no, no, this isn't happening. He's like, I, I've lost. It, it reminds me of um, uh, that movie Hero with, with Jet Li, where they're sitting right across from each other. And they know that both of them yeah. are so good at their moves and that he's trained so well that no matter what he does, he can't win. Because if he, he just tries reads, to go for a sword, yeah. he will die. Right he, now, it's a battle of He wits. just reads instantly, this will not end well. Yeah, that, that <laughs> like he's this, lost. Yeah, just staring into her eyes, he's like, she will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> So um, you, you got and it's that a great, great it, it's a great insight into Azula's character too, because she trusts nobody, and therefore she's able to out scheme the schemer because she trusts nobody. Mm -hmm. And this, there's a payoff to this later, so which I think is just great as the series goes on. So. Well, and what I love is I was saying in the episode before how I mean she even lets herself 
you know, it, get caught, you know, like whatever the earth benders have her. And she's like, what do you want? Uh, you know, uh, you want to strike a deal? I'm never going to deal with you. And it's like, you know, she could kill these people like in oh, half yeah. a second, but she's playing weak and dumb. And it's such a great scene when she walks away and she has that little smirk. And it's just, man, what a good villain. And she's only like, what, 13? I mean, fucking A, what a great I villain. I think she's a little, I think her and Zuko are a little older. Are they? Are they supposed Katara to be Katara and Soka. Well, I've never, I've never she's quite, younger, I think. I've never quite figured out their exact ages. I know, I think Aang's the youngest, isn't there? Aang and Toph, I think, are the youngest. Aang looks the youngest, and Azula looks like second oldest, and, and Zuko probably the oldest. Um, yeah, Z but, Zuko yeah. and Azula look... No, does, doesn't she call him little brother? No, 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 or she's the big younger. brother? No, oh, she, she's, she's the younger one, one. yeah. She, 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 their ages don't really matter that much to me. I mean, it's really... Well, I think character. it's... Yeah, so I mean... You, get, you got this going on. You have this great big fight at the end. Aang finally surrenders, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, caring about Katara. See, she's in danger, but realizes he has to block her out of his mind. He has to let go of her. He has to let go of the care for her in order to really give in to the Avatar state. And sure enough, what happens? He gets axed off. And she comes in to save the day. I'm wondering if that's going to come in later if it's like, you know, oh, by the way, uh, yeah, I totally blocked you out of my mind and said you didn't matter to achieve the Avatar state. Um, thanks for using your magic water that can only be used on one person and totally bringing me back from the dead and saving me and thus the entire world. Thanks. I mean, that's like, dude. <laughs> yeah, there that's is. That's harsh when you really think about it. He finally yeah. has to put her out of his mind and like just sacrifice caring about her. And sure enough, what saves the day is her caring about him and her making the sacrifice. This, of the whole, magic water. this whole theme about what the Avatar demands versus what Aang needs to be emotionally satisfied carries on into the third season. Yeah, um, so I Carries mean, on it... really into the finale because the finale basically addresses a lot of that, which is, well, if I have to completely detach, you know, does that make me sort of a robot? Do I have to do exactly what the guru is telling or what the avatars have done? You know, again, so very, it really is a great, it is addressed. I think this sets that up. And very, very adult themes. Like, that's a very tough thing to address is how much do you detach and how much is needed and how far is too far, how little is too little. And again, the, and it really put you in a circumstance where you're really questioning this. Like, yeah, what was the right move or what wasn't the right move here? Because he does get killed and ultimately it's her connection with him that brings him back. And, and, and her sacrifice, really. I There's mean, she could use that water for anybody. She almost gave element. it to Zuko. There's a huge sort of Taoist element to this whole show, which is things seem to work out. And this is always the, the clever thing well, say, I thought... It certainly seems to balance yeah. out, too. This is always a clever thing I thought to Star Wars, the, the original trilogy. I'm not going to get into the prequels, but it runs on that same concept, particularly in Jedi and Empire Strikes Back, which is mistakes happen, and yet still somehow through those mistakes, good things come out of it. That you can never exactly predict what the future is going to hold. And so... All of these things keep happening, and technically you would say, well, maybe Aang made the wrong move, but it all ends up somehow working out. Like, they make something out of it. Um, they keep persevering. It, so. It's adapting I, and working with your environment, and bad things come your way yeah. and work with it. You know, it make... It's like swimming. You can either struggle against the current or kind of work with it and mm. stay afloat. So. Yeah. Now, with that said, uh, the one scene that... Uh, we talked about this a little bit before, uh, that... I was kind of torn on, and I'm still kind of torn on, is Zuko's turn at the end, uh, when he switches back pretty much uh, to the dark side. And for me, I don't mind that he turns back, uh, and I could see it happening. What bothers me is that they spend so much time showing him they show him getting sick through the change of letting go of the Avatar. They show the duality happening in this great dream sequence with these two dragons. They show him finally coming to grips and being actually happy just sweeping the floors and, and making tea. I mean, it doesn't look like he's faking. He seems legitimately happy. And he's even willing to go after the sister and say, No, I can't run forever. I gotta, you know, I gotta start my new life. I have to, you know, be who I am now and I can't have this haunting me. And within a millisecond... It seems to turn back. And I'm not, again, I'm not against the turn, I'm against the fact that it was so quick after we showed such a long process the other way, and I, I wasn't sure how to feel about that. I didn't believe... Uh, okay, I mean... 
Dante Bosco is a great voice actor. So when I say this, this is not criticizing his voice acting. When I saw those episodes originally where he had become nice, you know, good morning, uncle, it's a great day, and then I didn't believe him for a second. And I'm not entirely convinced that the show is telling you, no, you have to believe this, that he suddenly really wants to be a villager. I think that performance and I could be talking completely out of my ass here, and, you know, he could come out at some point talking about the show, and I could be proven completely wrong. I think some of that performance is the character of Zuko trying to convince himself that this is what he wants. I don't think he ever fully believed it. Every time I see those episodes, he is so nice to such a degree, and it's such a turnaround that I always was sitting there in the back of my head going, you know, I think he's still very confused. I think he wants to believe this. This is somebody who is being handed this gift and he wants to grab it and he really desperately wants to say, this is what I want, this is what I really want, but deep down inside he's like, something's still not right. And that is his character arc the whole way through. It is always something is still not right and it's about But don't you think they would have shown that they're so good at showing just the little twinches or the little turns or the little frowns or smirks and stuff that don't you think they would have said, because I mean, every time it leaves on a shot with him, he is smiling and he is but happy. Keep, but keep if anything, to me it seems like it's building up that everything's gonna come crumbling down. He's happy. Yeah, of course things are going to come crumbling down. Why would he, though, show that when there's nothing else on the table to make him believe otherwise in that moment? See, what happens in this episode is she gives him, Zula, Zula gives him the offer and says, you can come back, you know, we can get the Avatar, you know, this is your chance to restore your honor. Before that, that wasn't on the table. When he accepts this, and says, all right, we'll live life as a villager, which is something that eventually he seemed to come around, but he's clearly uncomfortable with it for a number of yeah, episodes, almost the whole season. So that but when the, he makes that turn at the end, to me, that was him hitting rock bottom, going, why I have no other option on the table. Maybe this is my one chance. Maybe I'll start to embrace it. When she comes out, though, and people work like this, they'll, they'll accept something, and then you give them that one bit of temptation, like, Oh, it's on the table again. Maybe, maybe I can do this. Like, they had blocked it out of their mind, and that one thing comes forward, and he takes it. Well, and that, see, that's the thing, and that's what I was guessing they're probably going for, is that even though you're so committed to something, when that, you know, he has not been, you know, making tea and sweeping floors as long as he has been chasing it. Let me put the it this way. And when, when many, that change yeah. happened, well, hold on, I'm okay. somewhat agreeing with you here. Uh, when that change is offered, it, and it's made clear, even though it's by Azula, which I'm still like, wait, she's tried to kill you several times, but it, when the option is finally made there and it seems very real and very physical and can happen and, and can actually be delivered to you that everything you had before just fails you and it's almost like a total relapse to what you had before and it's like you can't help it because it's just been in there longer. But if that is the case, why couldn't they show him, like, go back to maybe that vision with the dragons or, or a little bit more? You see him thinking for a little bit, granted, and I'm sure they're going more for the shock value of it, that he turned. But why didn't they show a little bit more the turmoil of it? Because, I don't know, to me it really seemed like he was content with the life that was finally being handed to him. And he went through that sickness and he went through the dreams. And why would they show that if they didn't want to get across that he was really, really becoming one with that world and actually enjoying it? because it's an addiction. The, the thing about Zuko is, if you, if you watch this entire season and look at it as his wanting to get his honor back, this obsession with getting Aang, this is all an addiction of his. And what he does at the end of the second season is no different than an alcoholic in a moment, in a low moment, turning back to drinking. You know, and you could say, well, well why and, would you be yeah. sober for all this time and then just go right yeah, back correct, to drinking? Um, you know, and I, part of it, you're right. I think it is for shock value, you know, and I think that it's much more of a jaw-dropping moment if you don't drop all the little hints that maybe he's going to go back. And I was fine with that, again, because I kind of looked at it as it took him so long to get to that point where he accepted it that, like, I, to me, if you really wanted to, sh to show that, you know, he was... <sighs> Basically, I would have had him, if he was really going to be good throughout the rest of it, do that turn much earlier, where he accepts the village life much earlier in the season. But it took so long to get there that I was just thinking, 
Yeah, I think that was part of their point, is that he's not really accepting this. In the very end, he accepts it because he finally hits that point. I have no other out, nowhere to escape. You know, and no, then but he Azula... Did. He had Appa. He had Appa there, and he could have waited for the Avatar to come. He had the Blue Spirit outfit, and his uncle came and said, What do you really want? What is it that you really crave? And he turns away, and that's when the sickness begins. That's when the dream begins. He did have that option. Uh, you mean the option to go back and capture Aang? To, to get the Avatar, yeah. To, to regain his honor for the Fire Nation. But the thing is, I think he was still... See, that's where I think his uncle's influence comes in. You know, I think if his uncle was not there, he actually would have done it. You know, but that's the that's the point. Is Zuko his uncle is, was there later too, saying Zuko, don't do it, don't turn to Azula, don't don't go there. I mean, it was still but I think there's a difference close. between having up there and concocting an entire giant plan, and knowing the Avatar is in the other room. The Avatar is in the other room. Yeah, I mean that's my point. It's like it's way more immediate, you know. And the other thing is, particularly in the rest of the season, he seems always in these sort of situations where there's a thousand things going on. It's the same whenever he's the blue spirit, you know? It's like, there's a ton of things going on. I think that when you're presented with the choice between, oh, you have this battle going on, I, I found Appa, I can do this, you know, there's this whole Earth Kingdom conspiracy, which he seems to be aware of, you know? You're kind of busy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? In this scenario, there's the Avatar right there. Mm -hmm. You can go get him. Like, I think that temptation of just, like, it's, it's gift-wrapped with a nice bow versus the other one where he has to really work at it and he has the time to think. Well, I think in that moment of panic, he just was like, oh, I gotta do this. Well, and, and I will say this, again, this is something I bring up often. I mean, the only reason I've said before that I'm talking about this at all is that this show, again, has just really, really raised the bar in this. I would not be talking in this great detail usually about any other family show, and I do realize that's the term is family show, not kids show. This is not for kids, this is for families. Well, I think just from a narrative perspective, I mean, if you want probably the ultimate reason, it is shock value, but to me that doesn't make it any real... Uh, to me that doesn't make it worse for it, because honestly I thought it was such a great twist that, you know, I, and looking back on it, I just always justified as, yeah, I'm not sure I ever fully believed him anyway, so to me, it just makes sense. Well, but. and again, you, you have this, you have this long show, I mean, it, it, we know how tough it is, I mean, and a lot of writers do, uh, how, you know, to squeeze so much into, what is it, 24 minutes, yeah. and to have character, and to have story, and to give a damn about it, to have this pacing, and to have this long story go over, and, and episodic episodes, and, and uh, you know, ones that are self-contained, and ones that have to continue the story. I mean, again, to get any of this is very impressive, and even if there is this moment where I'm sort of like, eh, that could have been done a bit better, it's still fucking impressive, and this is still a really good uh, finale for the second season. Uh, you yeah, know, it, it, and it's still a good, I mean, you just watch it and you just go, holy It, it follows <laughs> the tradition of, I'm not going to say middle story syndrome, but in particular, it, I mean, this is the Empire Strikes Back. It's the second act. The series, now, yeah. Now the real conflict is in, the first is introduction, second is the conflict, and third is the resolution but of the conflict. W w not only what a great second act, but if you're going to do the Empire Strikes Back, um, this nailed it. I mean, when I think about the second act, new locale, um, a conspiracy, uh, the way it ends, you know, I, I really have expected, you know, like, Aang to just ride away on up and be like, don't worry, we'll get him back from that bounty hunter. Like, it... it Billy D. Aang. <laughs> it's really, really... They, uh, to me, it's, it's obvious. I don't mean this in a negative way. I don't mean, like, they're ripping it off. But it's very clear they watch Star Wars and were just like, yeah, we can do this. It's well, very no, close. I, I, I it's very the close in structure. When the guru, I even say in the last one, I'm like, you know, yes, and Yoda says to Skywalker, come back or you won't learn your training. Oh, I'm sorry, the guru says to Aang and says, come back, you won't learn your training, forget your friends. You know, and that one I saw more, I mean, with this one, you have the character pretty much dead. You know he's brought back. But I'm assuming they're insinuating now that the Avatar state is like, Kaput, like he's the last one. Cause, I mean, why else would they show that previously on uh, Element there? Or why would they have that even in there if he dies as think, the Avatar? Think, think about this all together. You've got the same group of characters going to a new locale where there is a conspiracy going on that can basically undermine their whole mission. Um, you've got a conflict with your main villains, which he loses. 
they all ride away basically sort of into the sunset, you know, worried. Some of the characters well, they're, are they're missing. Not, well, but, but they're <laughs> not going after a We had a wise guru. Mean, yeah. We had a, I'm and I'm not saying this in a negative way. It's actually a compliment because I think the original Star Wars trilogy was brilliant. Yeah, it's a great to and be if you're, and you if you're, have to see yeah. the next one. You and just have to. so many movies, uh, you know, there are so many people that rip Star Wars off. And you just feel like, yeah, you just ripped Star Wars off. There's not that much. You that did you, it because Star Wars yeah, did. Here, you it really haven't brought fits. anything to the table. Like this is this, how good storytelling yeah, works. This is the best homage to Empire Strikes Back I have ever seen. Like it nailed it. It got it right, and it's its own thing. Yeah, I'm not I was saying say, while it's its own. Thing. Yeah, I'm not saying it as a negative, but I'm saying is there is a definitely clear connection that I think they're like, yeah, we're kind of doing Star Wars with each season. You know, particularly seasons two and three, because I've seen all three now. So, um, again, not a bad thing, but I think you can't avoid t kind of looking at it that way. Well, I mean, you could even say that the Star Wars trilogies have been doing... I mean, they've been doing what other great trilogies well, of the past I, it, and three-parters have done and just stuff. Read any, mean, so. Just read any Joseph Campbell book. I mean, Lucas was just plundering yeah. mythical archetypes, so... Yeah, and exactly, I mean, and this so. show does the same thing, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's but, but it's like one like of the best it's examples... One of the, it's still its of, own thing as Yeah, well. it's still its own thing, and it's one of the best examples to how to really use mythical archetypes and do something in a similar vein to Star Wars while being its own thing. But there, but structurally speaking, it is very similar, you know, the way the whole plot shaped out in the second season to Empire Strikes Back, and in some ways, you know, the third season reminds me of Jedi and some of the things it does. So, again, not a bad thing. I think that makes it cooler myself. I don't, you know, if it was a lame ripoff of Star Wars, I'd be like, this sucks. But, you know, to me, and it may be unintentional. They may be like, well, we weren't intentionally doing that, but, you know... It's such a part of the culture now mm -hmm. that, you know, you may not be able to avoid it. And, I mean, Star Wars was ripping off Tolkien as well, so... Yeah, a bunch of... Tolkien had his own it, sources. It goes so, back yeah. to the... Yeah, this goes back to the dawn of time, so... Yeah, so, uh, bottom line, good, uh, good ending to a good season. I, I guess the moral of this whole season is just, Earth Kingdom sucks. <laughs> Stay the fuck away from the Earth Kingdom. It's, it's fucking ass. <laughs> it's not Cloud City. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I love the second season. Can't wait to see the third season. And uh, that's coming up next. So uh, we'll see you there.